Hello, this is Dr. Dave Pietros, and uh, we're going to take if statements just another step here, a little bit more complex. We're going to see the kinds of things that you can do with if statements, including nested if statements. Now, here we've got our program set up, and we've got an integer uh, declared. Uh, we're going to input a grade, so I'm going to say uh, C out, and I input. Uh, Students grade, okay, semicolon, and we're going to see in grade. There we go. All right, now what we want to do is, okay, if, and we're going to do a complex, say okay, if, okay, uh, grade is less than a zero, or grade is greater than 100. Input a mess output a message, and we're going to say, okay, see out. Here's the question. What if they do it again? What if they input it up again? Well, we're going to do this. We're going to say while, okay, um, grade is less than zero or grade is greater than 100, okay, we're going to do a while statement, which we're going to worry about here in a little bit, okay. See how. What's going to happen here is that while we're running this program, if they enter in a grade, I'm going to put invalid, uh, put it out, print it out, or grade is that. Now, that's all well and good, and we'll leave that alone. So now let's say that right here, we assume that we have input a proper grade, and then that we don't need an else, else statement here. We could put it if we wanted to, but we don't need it. So as long as the grade is less than or zero or is greater than 100, what's going to happen is it's going to stay inside that loop, and we're not going to fall out of it until we get a proper grade. So right here at this point, we know we've got a proper grade. So we can say if grade is greater than or equal to 94, then we'll say C out. if grade is greater than or equal to, let's say, 85, see how we got a B. Now you'll notice that I don't have to ask the question if it's greater than 85 and less than greater than or equal to 85, less than uh, 94. I know it's less than 94 because I failed the first test. It's not It's not greater than or equal to 94. It's 93 or less at least. So I know that. So I don't have to ask the question. Okay. I do have to see out correctly. I don't see a little error right there. All right. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead and get on the line. So we're going to end else. If grade is greater than or equal to 75, again, I don't have to ask the question if it's less than 85. We already know it's not. We got a C. else 
to ask this question. Okay, so here we have example of a very complex if statement. I can put booleans here. This can be and or or. Uh, I can group them together. And what's going to happen is it will actually evaluate this first, this one, and then it will evaluate the right side before it does the or. And I can put parentheses there, of course, but I know it's going to do it. If the grade is less than zero, or if it's greater than 100, I know I've got an invalid number. I'm going to print it out, freeze in the number. I'll input the grade, OK? If, if while the grade is less than, and this is another way of asking, then I could actually eliminate the first uh, if statement, just do this, input the grade. While the grade is less than zero, or grade is greater than zero, I'm going to stay in this small loop. I'm just going to constantly uh, say input student's grade. And as long as I input something outside that range, it's just going to stay in this while loop. Okay. Uh, if it doesn't, and first if I enter right first, it'll actually bypass it, go down here, and start executing these. Well, let's uh, look at our program here. This all looks very good. I make a few mistakes along the way. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little indentations here. And just make it look a little bit nice. Well, times well, I'll try to do is line these if statements up so it matches the else with the if that it's associated with. And this just makes our program just a little bit more readable, as you can see. We're going to save this. We're going to save file, save name. Okay, we're going to build it. Build solution. And I'll see if we got any errors. We might, we might have a few, but looks okay. So let's uh, start without debugging. All right. So we're going to put a grade. Let's do it wrong. Negative one. Oh, invalid. I'm going to enter it again. Enter student's grade. You'll see we're in that loop. Okay. On a one, on an invalid. Oh, that's bad. So I'm going to enter uh, 90. Okay. This is ah, got to be in the program. Very good. So let's go back and take a look and see what happens. So. While I was inputting the invalid grade, it stayed inside this loop right here. Once I got it, it went down and asked the question, is the grade greater than or equal to 94? No, it wasn't true. It says, was the grade greater than or equal to 85? Well, since it was 90, it says it was. It says, you got a B. Okay. Let's run the program again. Let's see if we can get it to come out with a D. Let's uh, change that to here, make it uppercase. D, so that would be greater than or equal to 65, but less than 75. So let's enter a 70, shall we? So we're going to go through debug, start without debugging. Yep. So we, we changed it. So I'm going to enter a 70. This is, aha, he got a D. Okay. Again, let's go back and look at our program. We entered in the correct grade right here. All right. So it says, is it? less than uh, or greater than? No, it's not. So it bypassed all of this. It bypassed all of it. The code was false. And it came down here to these series of if statements. And it finally found this one. Is grade greater than or equal to 765? And it says yes. And you got a D. This is an example of more complex if statements and nested if statements and the kind of things you can put inside of if statements. Remember that inside these brackets right here, on the statements, you can put any number of statements you want. Entire programs can go there. There is no limitation. All right, very good. If statements explains. Now we're next on to switch statements.